The Raiders have won the toss. They're in their home black jerseys with silver trim. Brad DeLuiso will be kicking it off for the New York Giants. And the deep men featuring in the middle the dangerous Desmond Howard. He dropped two last week. Deep into the end zone, and he'll let that one go. So Oakland will be starting from their own 20-yard line. Offensively, Jeff George, the quarterback, 3,900 passing yards a year ago. Up front, a solid defensive line still growing together. Big Lincoln Kennedy featured on the right side. Napoleon Kopp and the dangerous running back, Ricky Dudley, that very tough tight end who has speed and pass-catching ability to join two speedy wideouts in James Jett and Tim Brown. High formation starting on first down here for Jeff George and company under the new head coach this season, John Gruden. Hoffman has a lot of room. <laughs> Hoffman at the 10 and he is romping into the end zone. Touchdown, <laughs> Oakland. Woo! 80 yards in the opening play of the game. Tim, I told you at the onset of the show, I said, this guy can break some runs. You never know when the ball's in his hands when he can take it to the house. Well, you can't start a game any better than that. Opening play, 80 yards for the score. Napoleon Coffin, their number one pick in 95 at the University of Washington. And the point after by Davis is good. The Oakland Raiders stun the Giants. Seven to nothing. I want you to watch the cut he makes. Now, Keith Hamilton's going to get some penetration right in here. Watch Napoleon Kaufman make the cut back inside. And right there, look, the safety thought he had an angle on the play, and the safety took the bad angle. Napoleon Kaufman, you can't do that. This guy is so explosive, as Bill just told you. And yeah, they ran to the weak side of the formation. See, there's no tight end here. Watch Armstead. He can't get back inside. You see that plant there, Ronnie? He didn't have his footwork. You have to wonder about that ankle that he's been nursing all week. And that's a play that Jesse Armstead usually makes. Kaufman goes the distance, untouched, chased by Felipe Sparks. But once he made that burst into the secondary, he just exploded past everybody. And Kaufman has himself the opening score of this game. And the Raiders parking back to the difficult home field that they create for visitors especially those from the east exploding is a good word to use when you're talking about coffin because that's exactly what he is he's an explosive fact you know jim john fox related to him he said he's like a nitro dragster you know you put him in the game and blam he can blow out a quarter mile in no time then he goes to the sidelines and gets refueled and comes back in and shoots off another one John Fox, the Giants defensive coordinator, knew Coffin was capable of that. Short kick. Patton will take the short kickoff from Greg Davis. Gets out to the 23-yard line. And the Giants will have their first offensive opportunity. John Henry Mills on the tackle. So young Danny Cannell will lead out the Giants starting for the first time at the beginning of a season. He took over last year in the starting role. A young offensive line. Howard Cross, the tight end, joined by the dangerous Ike Hilliard. They hope to get something out of him deep today. Charles Way and Tiki Barber, the starting running backs. The Giants in white to our right. Cannell last week, 15 of 28, 159 yards. A pair of touchdowns, one interception against Washington. And first down, Charles Way, the big fullback, who will also be at the running back position in some sets. Gets a couple. Defensively for the Oakland Raiders, Johnstone, Russell, Maryland, and James Harris. The linebackers led by Greg Beekert in the middle, number 54. And a very solid secretary, the veteran Eric Allen, joined on the corner by Heisman Trophy winner Charles Woodson. Turner and Newman. Newman playing with a sore ankle. This is way finding running room. All the way out to the 46-yard line. And a flag down for a late hit. Yeah. You 
see, that's, that's what the Raiders have to get out of the habit of doing. That was Eric Turner after Way was already out of bounds. 21-yard gain and some tacked on now. Well, yeah, then you're going to add 15 yards onto the 21-yard gain. And it's yeah. bad enough when, when your defense breaks down and they get 21-yard run on you, and then you tack on an extra 15 with a dumb play like that. You think of John Gruden, that was the one thing he talked about. we got to start fast. Now you can't let that momentum leave off this football field because the fans are in it. Everything's here happening. Because of stupid mistakes. 15 penalties last week, 134 yards against them. This is Tiki Barber, and he has stopped just over the line of scrimmage by Anthony Newman coming up from the safety spot. They're going to mark it, however, a little better gain than it appeared. It's close to a three-yard pickup. Uh, now they back it up to two. So it'll be at the 35-yard line, call it second and eight. Well, you called Anthony Newman's name on that, and when you get a big run like that against you, you're always going to bring that strong safety up and hover him around the line of scrimmage, and that's what the Raiders did there. Double tight end now for the Giants. Canal's first pass attempt, and he's got Ike Hilliard. Hilliard just stopped and waited for the ball. of running back, the defensive back, went by him. So it's a first down at the 17-yard line of Oakland. Yeah, and Ike Hilliard is a guy that they talked about. They had to get the ball to him early on. One of the things right here, he's going up against Woodson. Everybody's been taking Woodson early on, and now you see Ike Hilliard. It was a, des a design play to throw it underneath him so he could come back. Woodson was staying up over top. First down, Giants driving here in their opening series. Tiki Barber gets about three down to the 15-yard line of the Raiders. James Harris on the tackle, defensive end number 93, and the linebacker Harvey, number 52. Bill, last week, watching the Raiders in this area, this is where they really rose to the occasion. Well, they had a lot of practice. Yeah, <laughs> they rose to the occasion, and, and, and this is where you got to play great defense, right? Well, that's where you have to really tighten it up. You know, you, you can bend a little bit, you bend, but when your back gets against that goal line, you've got to tighten it up. Hilliard in motion behind the ball. Nell swings it out for Barber. Barber in full flight down to the six-yard line. Richard Harvey steered him out. When you look at this play right here, the thing that I look at is the quarterback. Now, the quarterback is patient. Danny Connell is patient. He sits there. He reads the defense. He knows that he has man-to-man. -man. Now, what you want to do with a Tiki Barber is get him on one-on-one -on -one situations. Don't run him up inside. Get him out there where he can do his thing. First and goal, Giants. Barber smacks inside the five, is driven back. Forward progress should give him about a two-yard gain. Folston, the linebacker, number 55, and Eric Turner, safety number 42 on the hit. Yeah, and, and this is where the defense gets tightened. The reason the Raiders can tighten up in here is because of their play of their two defensive tackles and their middle linebacker, Beaker. You see Dower Russell in there running it down from behind? And that's what they can do. When the field gets short, it's tougher on the offense. If you don't have a powerful offense up front, it becomes tough once you get inside the 10-yard line. One-yard pickup to the five. Second and goal. Gary Brown in. A flag flies. May not have gotten the playoff on time. Gary Brown acquired from San Diego as a free agent this year. Gives him a little muscle at the running back position. 230-pounder. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense 72. There is no play. Five yards, still second down. Roman Oban charged with that. And that backs him up to the 10-yard line. Second and goal from there. Brown goes out. Barber returns. Yeah, and actually, that, that gives them, the Giants, a little bit of breathing room. And it gives your offense, when it's down there, a little bit more room to operate in the end zone. Hilliard out of the slot in motion right. Up the middle. It's complete to Hilliard, and he's in for a touchdown. And he has it. We're tied at seven. Yeah, they have some of the more colorful characters who get dressed for the Oakland Raiders games. And, of course, uh, these Giants fans, of the uh, Raider fans of long standing here in Oakland, glad to uh, have their team back starting its fourth season back here at the Oakland Coliseum after a hiatus down in Los Angeles. We so. Another long kickoff. That's right through the end zone in the air. And all Howard could do is watch it sail over his head. Now we've had two offensive possessions and two touchdowns scored. We're still tied at seven in Oakland.
Harvey, and he couldn't do that. So he got caught. Hilliard got to the end zone to tie it at seven. First down. The Raiders from their 20. Napoleon Kaufman goes off tackle right, picks up about three, tripped up by Keith Hamilton. Well, if you've joined us after the kickoff today, which sometimes happened, you missed what happened on the opening play of the game. An explosive burst by Napoleon Kaufman, 80 yards for the score for Oakland to give them a briefly held 7 to nothing lead. The Giants came back with Cannell passing to Ike Hilliard, their number one pick a year ago, a 10-yard score to tie it up. And on second down, Jeff George intended for Tim Brown, overthrows, that leaves third down, and about seven. John Gruden is still trying to get his players, his team, to believe in his system. And that's a hard thing to do. You know, primarily, these guys for the Raiders have been around for a while, Ronnie. I mean, you come in and you have a veteran group, and you're trying to push a new idea on them, trying to get to believe in the system. That's tough. Kenny Shedd and Terry Mickens in. Two more wide receivers, but George goes down, and it's Michael Strahan. Strahan, who had a huge day last week against Washington, picks up another sack. He had two last week against the Redskins, along with an interception for a touchdown. Well, here he is right here. Strahan said he was going to do on the first play. Take him and bull rush him. Leo Ira goes. The punt comes up a little short. Toomer signals fair catch at the 47-yard line. The New York Giants will have excellent field position here. When we return with 9.55 to go after a 34-yard punt, we're tied at first down now for the Giants at good field position. Canal and he's sacked. Lance Johnstone, the right defensive end. First sack by the Raiders following Strahan's effort that forced the Raider, the Raider punt. You know, one thing you want to do in your defensive end is rush half the body. Watch him rush to the outside right here. That's Roman open. Watch him run through the shoulder. See him run through half the body. Now, when you get upfield and you have the kind of speed that Johnstone has outside, you can't turn to the sidelines like Roman Oban did. Second and 19 now, back at the Giant 38. Tiki Barber with running room, off tackle, gets back the lost yardage and a couple of more. Well, it's no secret where the Giants want to attack the Raiders. Oh, I talked about it early on when they got down there in the red zone that the Raiders' strength of their defense is their two defensive tackles inside. And all the running plays that you have seen have been bouncing off tackle. It's been going out. 511 on the year last year. Four wide receivers on third down and nine. Now has time, but he's off target intended for Hilliard. Tight coverage on Hilliard. You know, Ronnie, they, one of the things they said is they wanted to get the ball to Ike Hilliard. We saw it on the first possession, but they're still continuing to go his way. Yeah, and the reason why is that this guy is an explosive guy right here. He's got Alvin Lewis on him, and this is a play that they work on a lot. Throwing the ball behind the receiver, letting Ike Hilliard adjust and make the play right there. Danny Cannell got the ball too much outside. Fourth down. Desmond Howard waiting for it at the 10-yard line. Brad Maynard's first punt for New York. Comes up short. Fair catch signaled at the 17-yard line by Desmond Howard. Just a 35-yard punt for the Giants, and we're still tied at seven here in the first. On first down, the Raiders. Flag flies. Thompson, the ball carrier, got back to the line of scrimmage and not much more. Wooten came up from the safety spot. Dick Hantak, the referee, signals holding against the Raiders. And that's an area for the Raiders that killed them last week in, in, in Kansas City. The offensive line and the holding problems. Everybody on the offense, including the tight end, holding. had a penalty. Offense, number 76. <laughs> Penalized half the distance to the goal line. Repeat the down. First down. See, that's, that's my old buddy Wisniewski. Boy, we used to have some battles. And he's lined up right inside here, and he's on Keith Hamilton. See, he got that foot of Hamilton. See, that's the old Pitt-Penn State rivalry. You know, wherever <laughs> they, yeah. Yeah, Wisniewski's from Penn State, and Hamilton's from Pitt. And when that rivalry continues. You know, Ronnie, you used to have that thing with the UCLA guys. Oh, all the time. All the time, Billy. And again, another problem, though, for the Raiders taking those kinds of penalties. George to the swing man, and he has met. Hoffman whacked. Out on the right corner, it was Hamilton, Conrad Hamilton. 
The man in Jason Seahorn's spot coming up to make a real good stick. Now, Ronnie, that falls under the category of Wulik, doesn't it? Yeah, that does fall in that category. <laughs> and I think the reason why is that after that first play, Bill, Napoleon Kaufman gashed him with that long run. They, so they're going back to playing zone. That first play was man-to-man. -man. They were trying to blitz. Now they went back to zone. And, and that's what happens when you can make a play like that. You can read and stay in the flat and come up and make a woo hit. Washington went after Conrad Hamilton last week, but he had a pretty decent game, including an interception. Pressure again, and George had to throw it away from He was backed into the end zone. Pressure from Scott Galley, number 52. Well, now for an NFL update, let's go back to uh, James Brown in our box. So do you talk about that explosive offense, but then it goes back, and they keep people out of the end zone? Yeah, and, uh, you know, one of the things that you got to look at with that team is their defense, and not only their defense, but can Randy Moss continue to just light them up all year long? Defense. Encroachment by Harris. Harris. Still third down. The quarterback moved after the defense had made contact with the center. So they mark it off against the Giants this time, and I believe it was Robert Harris. No, 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 no. I thought I saw him backing out early. Hey, when you got a front four like the Giants have, it's the littlest movement by the quarterback, and you're coming off the ball, Ronnie. Well, they get five anyway. Come on, come on, 15. Come on. George he has to throw it away again. Was he outside the tight end, tight end box? Yeah, I think yeah, he made I think it he was, Bill. I think I he got outside. Tried. He's allowed to ground it in that situation Boy, I if tell you, from the pocket he, and you've got to get outside okay here's the tight end here's the tight end now you're gonna run this right back inside the hash marks here and see where Jeff George is when he throws the ball into the dirt I don't believe he's outside that no well, that's darn close I can tell you that much well you know the you know when it's close he always goes to the offense field <laughs> it seems that way yeah it's forced the punting situation and Aragus gets a dandy this time. Toomer from his own 35. Monty Toomer still going. And finally knocked out of bounds at the 48. So once again, the Giants nearly at midfield. An excellent field position. Aaron Wallace pushed him out. 54-yard punt, 15-yard return. So the Giants tied at seven in good position here. First down Giants at their own 48. Gary Brown. Gets a couple, and a flag flies from behind the Giants offensive Yeah, they're backfield. going to call holding number 78, Greg Bishop. Boy, Dow Russell was in the backfield so quick that he could have made a play, and Greg Bishop just pulled him. Holding, holding, offense, number 78, 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down, first down. Yeah, watch, watch right here. Russell's going to come through here, and then Bishop right there is going to pop out. He's your guard. Number 78. Watch him in the backfield. See the grasp he has on him there? Well, when you think of a guy that's buying in to John Gruden's program, you, you got to believe that Daryl Russell is, is, is the guy that's setting the example right now. What, what a pleasure he was to visit with the other day. You know, and, and what, he's learning from the best. He's learning from Howie Long. You see Howie Long dressed up there? I saw the <laughs> neck roll. <laughs> Their first pick a year ago, Russell. And now a wide open to the tight end, Cross. Cross has the first down. Yeah, that's coming back. And dives out to the 35-yard line of Oakland, but another flag down. And it's that area, Ronnie, that, that area out there in the flat where the linebackers in the safety yard, there's confusion right now with the Raiders. Well, it, I think it was confusion by Howard Cross. I don't think he, was, he knew the ball was coming to him <laughs> on that play. Holding. Offense. Number 53. 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down. First down. This right. time the center, Lance Scott. Lance Scott, he's to the right of Bishop right here. Watch the... That looks like a little... Oh, and, and then the shot to the head on top of it. So the Giants looking a little bit like the Raiders did last week at Kansas City. Going backwards here. Cross and Papunu, double tight end. Canel to Papunu. Al Papuna, number 85, activated this week, coming off a knee injury. Free agent acquired last year from Kansas City. Kansas City, and he was in San Diego for years after before that. He's a guy, really, that for the Giants need some good tight ends. 
And that's one area I talked to Jim Fossil about. He said, I want to get more productivity out of the tight end position. That's one area that I'd like to get more out of. And it, you think about it, and the reason is it would really help out the outside passing game if they had somebody in the middle of the field to contain those safeties. They send Barber in motion on second and 28. Screen pass to Charles Way and Way down the sideline and Haller literally. You see, who, you see who chased him down? Four. What a play. Now that's a play. That's that, that's football. That's Daryl Russell. Now look at Daryl Russell all the way down the football field. But it was an excellent play because they had a blitz on right here. But you had Daryl Russell on the inside being able to not come off. He's dropping. He's got a zone blitz. He's dropping. He reads the, he reads the screen. Now he plays off the block. And 330 pounds gets up the football field and snatches him with one hand. And I've seen this kid run that hard on every time he's on the field. I like that about him. Pat Swilling in defensively on the edge on the right side here in the pass rush. Third down, just a little less than 14, and Cannell connects to Hilliard. He's tied up immediately, short of the first down at the 46-yard line of the Raiders. Hey, uh, you see Danny Cannell on that play? I mean, you're talking about a young quarterback and growing up and maturing. Watch the pressure. Here comes Eric Turner right in his face. And he knows he's coming in his face. And he somehow gets that ball out of there. And we're talking to Jim Fossil. He said, that's the one thing. He said, last year I had to find a way to win with a young quarterback. This year I'm watching him take strides in maturity. And he's got that sixth sense that every quarterback has. Bradshaw, all these guys have that sense of just knowing where to go with the football. Maynard another short punt, but it'll take a good Giants bounce and it's going to be buried at the three-yard line. John Williams down there to down it. So the Oakland Raiders will be starting from inside their three. Oakland starting deep again. They spot the ball at the four after the punt. Ford gets it away and it's complete to Tim Brown. Foot race on again. This time he's pulled down by Tito Wooten. But a first down in Giant territory at the 46. Well, we talked about we talked about Jeff George. If you look at this throw right here, the great thing about this throw is he threaded the needle right there inside the linebacker. And on the backside, we got the wrong ankle there. But if you see him, he threaded the needle. He was able to get the ball to Tim Brown. It was an excellent throw, but that's what we want to see out of Jeff George in this West Coast offense. He also has to buy into this offense. He also has to believe in these receivers. And right there, that was a great play by Tim Brown and Jeff George. 49 yards the gain to Tim Brown. Napoleon Kaufman stopped after a gain of close to two. Michael Strahan and Corey Whitmer with the stop. Strahan in on it with Corey Widmer. Let's take a look in at Jesse Armstead. Remember the first play? We took a look at his ankle. He's had that sprained ankle all week. And he's in there and he's just pushing. You know, you see him, he's just pushing on a pile, pushing on the people. And Ronnie, that's a dead giveaway that there's still a lot of pain and anger. He's not flying around like the player that I know he is. Gain of a yard. Wing set left and behind the ball comes Tim Brown. Pressure again on George, and down he goes. Back at the 40-yard line, Chad Bratsky. Well, you know something there? The change that John Fox, the defensive coordinator, said, hey, yeah, I'm not seeing the movement from Jesse Armstead. Right here, you see Armstead coming from, coming from the middle, up the hole. He runs through Kaufman, the back, and he's putting pressure, and that's what you want to do. You, If your guys kind of hurt. Look what they do. They run that trailer blitz. They bring the first linebacker inside, then loop him around. It so that the back has to make a choice on who to pick up. So, you know, the, John, you're right. John Fox saw that and said, hey, we're going to create some scenarios for Jesse Armstead to get free. And he set up the sack for Bradsky, who had two last week against the Redskins. Second sack today by the Giants. Third down at the 40-yard line. George flushed again. He had a little more time. Now he throws this one away. And another punting situation for Oakland. Theo Aragus hits from his 30-yard line. It looks like it came off the side of his foot. Toomer from his 22, and he'll bring it. It's a hard hit, knocked out at the 30-yard line, and again, decent field position for the Giants. They just haven't been able to capitalize Calvin Branch on the hit. 38-yard punt, 9-yard return as we look at the defensive coordinator for the Raiders, really Willie Shaw. Shaw. Yeah, he, he came in, he's new this year, along with John Gruden's staff, and 
John Gruden knew him back in the days when John was in Green Bay and Willie was part of the Minnesota Vikings crew, and they brought him in to correct this. I mean, if you take a look at that, and they, let me sum it up for you. Last year, simply put, they were last in t total defense, they were last in rushing defense, and they were last in passing defense. That was an NFL first. In NFL history, it's the first time a team was 30th in all those categories. Charles way on first down. Got a couple. Danell is 6 of 7 passing. He was 3 of 3 in the opening drive that led to the Hilliard touchdown. I think, that, Ronnie, I think the one thing that Willie's instilled in this group, and what I saw last week in Kansas City, is they have fight. Now, part of that reason they were so bad last year in the 30th is because a lot of times they just gave up. Yeah, and I think the reason why they gave up is that they didn't buy into it. I mean, we keep talking about selling, but Willie Shaw can sell you anything, and the one thing he can sell you is pressure. He can put pressure on the quarterback, and these guys are starting to buy into it, but they have to continue to create that and make that happen. Cannell finds Hilliard in traffic. There's pressure on Cannell, and he released the ball right into a crowd, but Hilliard came up with a catch, and Eric Allen on the tackle. Now, you, you can see right here, and everybody's talked about Woodson. What I like about this kid, he's confident. He understands the game. And what he what he does right there, he stays with the play. He didn't he finished the play. Now John Gruden and Willie Shaw both talked about it. How do you stay with the play? How do you keep it? That should have been a penalty. They had 12 men in the offensive huddle. Third down and two. Barber brings it to the near side. Good pursuit by the Raiders. Shuts it down. Allen, the cornerback, number 21. Got the first lick on the previous play with Woodson wrapping him up, and Allen comes to the running play this time. And talking about selling things, he brought in Eric Allen for that reason. Take a look here, Ronnie. The new rule this year is you're not allowed to have 12 men in the huddle on the offense. See the 12th guy running off the field? That's the new rule put in this year by the NFL, and the reason is being because you can't trick the defense. You cannot trick them into thinking, well, what do we have out there? Maynard hits from the 22-yard line of the Giants. That's a good punt, backing up Desmond Howard, and he's dropped Ooh. immediately inside the 15, Sean Williams, the rookie. And the blue, and the outside's 25. Oh, you know what the, hey, you know what the middle Number spot 85. is. Penley has declined. Holding. Receiving team while the ball is in the air, number 50. That penalty is accepted. Penalized half the distance to the goal line. First down. Two guys called on the uh, receiving team. And they'll and start from the... Uh, let's see where they're backing this up yet. All the way down to the six-yard line of the Raiders. That's Frank Gans Jr., the son of Frank Gans, who's special team phenom coach throughout almost every team in the NFL but you know he's passed down that tradition to his son on on coaching the special teams and he, he had a tough go last week you see the numbers right there today the offense but he had a tough go last week with Desmond Howard and another flag in the air on first down Kaufman Offside. defense number 55 lined up in the neutral zone Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. First down. Marcus Buckley, linebacker number 55. So both teams just showing a lack of discipline here and a lot of penalties. It must be they have the coaches tearing their hair out early in this game. We still are in the first period, 28 seconds to go. You know, Tim, remember yesterday when we talked with Tim Brown? Tim Brown said, if we don't beat ourselves, we can beat everybody we play. Christian Peter and Bernard Holsey come in for the Giants defensively. First down and five for the Raiders. Quick pass, not to Tim Brown. Trying to get to the marker, and they're going to be very close, but I think they're going to rule he stepped on the line just before he got to the first down marker. Sparks in the coverage. Terrell Davis, we're told, has just run for another long score, 60 yards, and we just saw moments ago on that highlight we brought you from James Brown in that Dallas-Denver game. So the Broncos open a lead to 21 to 7 over Dallas. And it is first down here for the Raiders at the 11-yard line. Kaufman dropped for a loss as good pressure by the Giants front. And we have reached the end of the first quarter with the score.
The Oakland Raiders seven, the New York Giants seven. 25 years since the Giants played in this stadium. Second down and 15. The Oakland Raiders. George intended for Tim Brown, incomplete. Conrad Hamilton with the coverage. Number 41. On the coverage. Tim Brown, their star receiver. Last year, 104 catches for the, uh, the Oakland Raiders. 77 games in a row he has got at least one pass. Advanced it one more earlier in this game. Third down, 15. And they go to Harvey Williams. And Williams picks up the first down running all the way out to the 35-yard line. Williams with his first carry. Harrison Armstead having to range way back to make the tackle. Well, you, you know, you, you got to wonder if they don't know about Jesse Armstead and how he's feeling with that foot. You know, the little foot pass outside there, attacking the outside perimeter on the Giants. George now four of seven. Four of eight, pardon me, passing. Hitch now. This is Kaufman, and he's got room. Kaufman keeps his balance and gets another first down to the 45-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. They have a little motion play in here. Now watch what happens. Harvey Williams comes down and cracks on Bradsky, and that gets the seam there. Napoleon Kaufman can make just about anybody in this league miss. What you like about that play, Bill, though, is that they're attacking people, they're getting outside, and Harvey Williams is a guy that they want to get some, some somehow involved in this offense, blocking, running, doing a lot of things there. Straight drop this time for George. Deep downfield, intended for Dudley, and double coverage down there breaks it up. The linebacker, Scott Gallion, running with him. And Tito Wooten at safety number 29. Well, when you look at this group right here, that's what you want. If you're going to rush four, give me some time. Let me get let me get this receiver down the field. Ricky Dudley, right there, Ricky Dudley is a guy that they have to what? figure out how to get the ball did, to. Did you see Scott Gallion, 52? He it looks like he had a hand on the collar of Ricky Dudley. He was pulling him back. Second and 10 Raiders at their own 45. We're still tied at seven. Just on the way in the second quarter here in Oakland. And that is incomplete. Oh, a little high for James Jetty. Couldn't bring it down. Sparks had the coverage. The ball was thrown a little bit high to Jet. But in this offense, that standard of excellence that John Gruden talked about, the thing that he wants out of this team is to raise their level of excellence a little bit higher. Right now, this team's standard is low. That's why they're practicing faster. That's why they got the tempo. They're trying to create a different ap atmosphere here, and you got to have consistency with your wide receivers. They got to make plays. Third and ten. George sideliner off the mark. Something went wrong on that one. Mickens, the intended receiver, but I don't. I don't think he Jeff wasn't George. I'm not George saying, thought he was going to. I'm be. not talking about the last two passes either. Either I'm talking about so far every time he's thrown the ball, he doesn't look sharp. And you know when you talk about Jeff George, that's one of the things you talk about. Streaky. You know every time you do a Jeff George game and you talk to the opposing defense coordinator, they say the same thing. Boy, when he gets hot, he's something else. Once again, the Raiders have to punt. Aragus lops a very high. Punt that comes down at the 10, a fair catch signal there by Tumor. The Giants will start at their 11-yard line, tied at 7 with the Raiders here after a 44-yard punt. First down for the Giants from their 10-yard line, and not much there as Tiki Barber stopped by Eric Turner. The Raiders have changed uh, their front somewhat. Uh, Grady Jackson in for Daryl Russell and Pat Swilling on the end for Johnstone. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Still going to leave second and 10 from the 11-yard line.
Nice grab. That's Howard Cross from yeah. Canal. He close to the first down. Canal now eight of nine passing for the Giants. Look at the numbers there. The Giants on their first drive, they marched right down the field and got that touchdown to tie the game. And since then, they really haven't done much. On first down, Gary Brown trying the right side, gets a couple. Close to the 25-yard line. Well, let's go and show you that Terrell Ter Davis run again. Oh, running it up. They're still looking for that free safety to show up. Nothing there for Charles Way. Yard at most. Brings and, up a passing down. And you know what's happening here. You're looking at the Giants, and Fossil talked about. I, I'm just. I'm just here to figure out how we win games. I'm not going to sit there and worry about statistics. I'm not going to worry about a lot of things that people put a, a, a lot of work into. I'm going to worry about how do you get a W. And right here, he doesn't want to turn the ball over. We're going to hold the ball. And when you're 0 for 3, and last week they had 18% on third down, they got to make a play here. And now, and he connects with Callaway. Callaway has the first down for the Giants to the 36, maybe the 37-yard line. You know, when you talk about the Giants over the years and you watch and you watch, this guy right here, number 80, Callaway, he's really been as consistent as any receiver that I can think of in the league. Not great speed, not great hand, good hands, possession receiver, not great route runner. I mean, just finds a way to get open and get the job done consistently. Callaway has now caught a pass in 33 consecutive games, had 58 on the season a year ago. An L play action. Just gets it away to Barber. Barber makes a good catch and gains about seven on the play. Greg <laughs> Beaker's the Canel. linebacker. What a throw there. How about that? You got people hanging on you. You're in your second year, and you got the poise to be able to get yeah. the ball to Tiki Barber and hit him in stride. And Coach Fossil talked about that. I mean, I like the fact that this kid, Danny Cannell, has that presence. He has that leadership ability, Bill. Well, he said that sixth sense in playing the position. He says not all the time he can see actually what's all around the field, but he has a feel. He knows if this blitz is coming here, he knows where the open receiver is. And now, now 10 of 11 for 99 yards. Gary Brown gets the call this time, gains a little more than a yard, short of the first down. Should leave third and about a yard to go. You know, when we, midfield. when you talk about the Giants, you have to look at the whole team. And, you, and last year, it was their defense. It was the defense took them to the top of the division. And Coach Fossil knew it because he had to put everything on the defense because you had a young quarterback. This year, he's trying to get more out of his quarterback, a little bit more out of his offense. Now, their defense always comes up for him. They always find a way to make turnovers and make plays and put the offense in position to win. Third and short, and the Raiders come up big here. Brady Jackson stops Gary Brown behind the line, and it forces the Giants into a punting situation. And there's that third down percentage again. You know, third down, and you're trying to go over where they one for four, one for five today. Look at Grady Jackson. Look at him. He just blows right in the backfield, comes off his block of Ron Stone and shoots in the backfield. And as a defensive lineman, especially in short yardage situation, that's where you want to be on the other side of the line of scrimmage. What do they call that, root hogging? Well, you guys call it that because you call us hogs. We call it penetration. Brad Maynard's punt and the fair catch signaled by Desmond Howard at the 14-yard line. 45-yard punt, and Daryl Russell headed to the Raider locker room on the limp. 8-21, remaining first half. Detroit in overtime. They'll take on Green Bay, who sent Tampa Bay to a second consecutive defeat. That's complete to Dudley, the tight end. Out to the 19-yard line, close to the 20. George now 4 of 12 passing. Yeah, and John Gruden knows that he's got to get Ricky Dudley involved in this game. Uh, the thing about Ricky Dudley, though, is he reminds me of Keller Winslow. And in, in that formation, he's he's lined up as a wire receiver. He was able to take the, the strong safety out there. And that's what you want to do. You want to get him in positions where he can move around and make plays. Get the ball in his hand, and this guy can change the complexion of this team. He may be hurt. He went out holding his hand. Derek Brown is in there now. Second and four, and it's sailed by Georgian again. 
Obviously, there's some miscommunication. No receiver anywhere near the play. Yeah, and George is hitting the top of his head saying, hey, you know, Jet, you got to keep on going inside. I'm expecting that speed to keep going inside. He's anticipating there that he's going to, you know, keep going, and, and Jet breaks off the route. Either that or think. Look, you look, he's think, think, you know. I mean, he checked at the line of scrimmage to an audible. He changed out of the play. It looked like they ran a different route than what Jeff was throwing to. Sure did. Third down, about four. Rolling this time and gets it out to James Jett. Makes the catch short of the first down. So once again, Oakland will have to punt. Well, it's been a pretty shabby uh, offense, really, on the part of, of both teams so far, unable to sustain any kind of drives. Remember when this game began, you had Kaufman going 80 yards for the opening score for Oakland. The Giants drove right back on a good drive led by Danny Cannell, three for three, and then connecting with Hilliard for the score. Since then, it hasn't been so much good defense as shoddy offense on the part of both squads. 6.59 to go, first half. Aragus really lopped it. Tumor to bounce back in. It did not go out of bounds. He thought it was going to go out, but it bounces for the Raiders down inside the 15 of the Giants. And Amani, 58 yards. Amani right here, you gotta you gotta stay with the ball. You gotta stay with you gotta try to make that play. And I'm sure that his dad is looking at him right now saying, son, you gotta make that play. No doubt keeping a close eye on his progress in this game. Tiki Barber on first down for the Giants. Out to the 18-yard line. Grady Jackson made the tackle. And the word on Daryl Russell, he has an injured ankle. We don't know the extent of it, but he has not yet returned to the field as starting right defensive tackle for Oakland. Their first pick last year from USC. Giants have rushed for 42 yards, Oakland 414. We have 6.15 to go in the half. Barber. Got by Beaker. Gets about another four yards on the play for New York. You know, we talked to Charles Way yesterday, and you know, Way used to be just a blocker. Watch number 30. He's leading up there, the fullback. He puts that hit on Richard Harvey. He opens the crease there for Tiki Barber to get outside. But now Way, now Way is, is a guy that carries the ball. And yesterday he's saying, around, you know, he wants the ball about 15 times a game. Six defensive backs in, the dime, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Patton, David Patton, number 83. And so the Oakland Raiders defense holds. It, it, right here, Eric Allen, they brought him in here for this reason. To take out the wire receiver, to play man-to-man -man tough defense when we're blitzing. And, and this relationship with Eric Allen... And Willie, Willie Shaw, Shaw, they go back a long ways. When, when high Eric school. Allen was a kid, right, in high school, they met each other, and, and Willie Shaw sat, sat down with him and said, son, you got a chance to be a great football player, but you got to go to school. And Willie Shaw at the time was an English teacher, did that. Maynard's punt comes down at the 38-yard line. There is a flag on the play after not a good punt, only 39 yards. Referee Dick Hantak with the call. During the punt... Holding, receiving team number 44, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, another 10 yards tacked onto the Raider docket. There's a hold right here. John Henry Mills had a hold of him. Ryan Phillips, anything goes. Nickel insisted on starting and going as long as he can. He's still in there, 527 to go in the half. On first down, the Raiders stop behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss. No running room for Kaufman that time. Well, these two giant coaches, Jim Fossil, the head coach of the defensive coordinator, John Fox, spent some time here. Fossil worked for the Oakland Raiders in 95. John Fox, the defensive coordinator, was here 94 and 95. And so uh, today has a little special meaning for them coming back to take on John Gruden, of course, Al Davis and company. Jeff George, that's on the money to Terry Mickens and a gain of about six on the play. I make it to eight yards on the play with a two-yard loss on the run. 
Third down. Third down and about five with the marker now. 440 to go. Yeah, and it was funny before the game. I saw Fossil and, and, and Al Davis out there converse with one another, and, 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 and you know that they're sitting there talking about strategies, but also reminiscing on what could have been. Yep, movement there. You know, like Derek Graham, the right guard, jumped a little early. You know, there was a story out that, you know, Fossil was unhappy that Al Davis was Ball calling start. all the plays. Offense, well, 74, five-yard penalty, still third down. You know, Jim Fossil said, no, that, that, that's absolutely not true. That wasn't the case at all. Don't you think that's been uh, been the case with uh, with Al Davis over the years, just because he's a former coach and because he's so involved with his team? It's always been felt, ah, I bet he calls all the plays. Well, Jim Fossil said, at least when he was here, that's not the case. Third down and 10 now. George changing up. Williams is in the backfield as a lone setback. George, he's got a man open, and that is Mickens. First down, Raiders in Giants territory at the 42-yard line. Twenty-seven yards. They spotted at the 45. Well, everything starts up front, and these guys do a nice job of stopping the pass rush of the Giants front four. And then downfield, what you like here is Mickens. And why did they bring him in here, yeah, Bill? Exactly. So he, he could teach these guys how to finish plays. That's what Mickens did with Gr yeah, Gruden and Green, Green Bay. And he knows the system. Foley and Kaufman, and he dropped behind the line, and it's Conrad Hamilton after the good charge by Bratsky. Conrad Hamilton from the corner ties him up. Now, Bratsky's an interesting story. This guy, if you look at everything that's surrounding him, you say, this guy doesn't belong in the NFL. And to be quite honest with you, they've probably tried to cut him every year he's been there. But to me, he's like Freddy Krueger. He won't go away. He didn't go away when he was a walk-on in college, and he's just kept trying and trying and trying, and you now he won't go away from the starting lineup. Starter at the defensive end. Second down and 12. And yeah. Another flag down as the pass falls incomplete. Robert Harris. Offside. Defense number 97. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Second down. Robert Harris. And, and you can see here Jeff George. Jeff George is giving him a, a couple of late counts here. You know, trying to slow this rush down. And that's what you have to do. You got to take the edge off this giant front four. And you do that by going with a hard count and going on three and, and, and two. Well, they've, they've, the Raiders' offensive line have been doing a nice job of giving George some time. The problem's really been the timing between George and his receivers. John Ritchie, the lone running back, he's the fullback. Maple package in defensively on second down. George, too far, too long. Intended for Mickens down the left sideline. You know, I saw that last week from George, too. And I saw him make a couple nice throws on the run. They, we saw, get, watching film running, we said, oh, my gosh, how did he make that throw? It was right on the money. But then when he had some time, he always, one thing Jeff George isn't going to do, he's not going to underthrow a guy. No, he, he's not going to do that. But the, the footwork, and, and that's something that John Gruden is, is trying to do, work with, the, work with the complete package, get him to work into the pattern, not stay with the pattern, not fall back, not throw off the back foot. Now the pro set, still three wides. George gets some time, now rolls to his right, and he's off target. He Short of what? Tim Brown. He's off target, and he's been off target all day. His throws have not been on all day long. And if you have to go back and think, why? Why could that be? Well, remember the hyperextended elbow last week? He had the injury. Now, we sat down and talked to him, and he said, no, I've been fine. You know, it's fine. I just got it bent back. Derek Thomas, Bennett. And, you know, it strained it a little bit, but I'm fine. But his balls have not been on the money at all today. And that's a difficult thing to do is throw the ball with the hyperextended elbow because those ligaments and, and that joint area gets a little swollen there. And now he's trying to get that ball out there. It's tough, Bill. Leo Aragos lofts another high one. It's taken as a fair catch by Toomer. 
at the 13-yard line of the New York Giants, a 29-yard punt. On first down, Canal. Off target intended for the tight end cross. You're going to have a roughing the passer. And a flag down back near the goal line. And it was James Harris, the yep. defensive end, number 93, with a late hit on Canal. Defense number 93, late hit, led with the head. 15 yards, first down. Well, you know, the ref, okay, you got the personal foul and you got the 15 yards, but then they're going to say not only was it a late hit, but you led with the head. So it's a late hit and you led with the head. Well, and you can't say he was using his head in the way his coach would like him to use his head because it's another costly penalty. Same problems they had last week, 15 of them against Kansas City. 134 yards they gave up. Uh, when you've got a couple minutes left to go in the half, you don't want to give any free yards up. 2.23 to go, and the Giants find themselves out now at their 28-yard line. Tiki Barber, Great and that's fill. Turner coming up. Great fill. Blowing in from the safety spot, dropping Barber for the loss. And last year, Eric Turner came in here with high expectations. Watch this play right here, and these are the expectations that I like. Getting up in that hole, sitting there, attacking, taking on Tiki Barber and bringing him down. It looks like a 42 I once remember hovering around the line of scrimmage, smacking people around. We'll be back here in Oakland. Two minutes to go, first half. Tiki Canal, and they built an excellent relationship that certainly helped this young quarterback. And he connects to Cross. Cross gets back near the original line of scrimmage. Leaves third and about 10, depending on the spot. Jim Fossil who was, uh, was a quarterback in college himself, and there's coach co quarterbacks in the pros, including John Elway at Denver, and he says that Cannell has common sense and a good feel for the game, and for his part, Cannell says it's great to have a head coach who's also a quarterback coach. Look at the numbers, 11 to 13. Third down and nine. Toomer, Patton, Callaway, three wide receivers in. Lots of time for Canal. Go to the short man. Callaway uh, trying to get to the marker. I don't think he made it. It'll be close. Short of the first down. And what I like about this coverage right here is that this right here is a, a coverage that it's going to make Danny Canal have to make the great throw. Right there, he, he has to throw the ball to the outside, and that's what you want. Sometimes you got to lay off. Everybody talks about blitzing teams. What you want to do there is you want to make Danny Cannell make a great throw. He couldn't make it. He had to throw it out to the flat. They couldn't get the first down. Brad Maynard with the punt. Desmond Howard signals fair catch at the 20-yard line. Neither team has been able to sustain an offense. George on first down from the 20. That's complete to Richie, the fullback from Stanford out of the backfield. Their number three pick, third round pick this year. Now eight of 19 is Jeff George. And I think now John Gruden's thinking to himself, hey, let's just take a little some stuff underneath. You know, maybe, maybe his arm is bothering him some. Let's just stay with the short stuff and pick and dink our way down the field. Second down and four, 57 seconds remaining first half. Again, flags and whistles everywhere. You know, talking to Jeff George uh, at their practice facility on Friday, this will be against the uh, the Raiders, we believe. Ball start, offense, 82, five-yard penalty, still second down. James Jett, I just have to accept that. It doesn't affect my throwing. Well, this afternoon it looks like maybe it has. Now we've got, again, everybody jumping. Jumps a little bit early. Encroachment, defense, 91, five-yard penalty, still second down. 57 seconds still remaining. Second along three. George connects this time. The Raiders have a first down to the 40-yard line. James Jett. This is what John Gruden works on. Every Friday, they work on this situation right here to get the three points, be patient, take what the defense is going to give you, and then just try to manage the clock well. Rolling this time, and he finds an open man who 
Jet again, and a first down, Raiders. Into Giants territory, 29 seconds on the clock. Raiders call timeout. But there's always been some other circumstances, and hopefully he can trust in John Gruden. Stay with us at halftime for J.B. and Terry. If you look at everything around the league, John Ritchie makes his second catch. Picks up about four, knocked out near the 45-yard line of the Giants. Clock stopped at 24 seconds. And, and I like the Giant defense right here. The Giant defense, they're not going to give up with the big play. They're going to keep everything in front. They're going to force Jeff George to make the throws underneath and force him to complete those passes. Second down, six. Two setbacks. George with time and has another first down to the 35-yard line. That's Terry Mickens. He put time out again, he called. First down from the Giants, 35. Screen. Kaufman. Kaufman gets down to the 22-yard line. The and ball they came loose. Last one. And they used their last timeout. No, and I think it's a fumble there. It's a yeah, fumble. No, it's it a, a fumble. A loose Giants ball. ball. Bradsky put the hit on him, and they're going to rule a Giants ball. Kaufman had the first down yardage with the clock ticking. It's down to 10, but it came loose on contact. And you want to look for you want to look for if his knee is down. That ball is out of Bradsky's arm that knocks it out. Bradsky right there gets the strip of Napoleon Kaufman in the ball before he is down. But I think they changed the call. I think they changed the call. I believe they're saying that Oakland had a timeout call before that ball no. came loose. But no. let's see here. Still some discussion. Well, you can't call timeout before the play's no, over. That's for sure. But that was a smart play by John Gruden. Give the referee some time, but think about it. Don't let the clock go. Let's give themselves some time. Now they give themselves they give themselves some time, and the referees can kind of look at it. That ball, that, that ball is a fumble, and the Raiders are extremely lucky right they now. Get to a have break possession. there. They have the ball on a first down. We have 10 seconds left. They're at the Giants' 22-yard line. George to the end zone. Nobody home there. Good coverage in the end zone. He just threw that one away. And on comes the field goal unit with Greg Davis. And Davis struggled last week. He missed two field goals last week. And in the end, and right now, he's got to kick off the dirt, Bill. I mean, coming, snapping the ball from the grass to the dirt, it's going to be interesting to see if they can hold on to the ball because they have problems. Eric Goose, Eric Goose had problems last week putting holding the hold on, down, yeah. putting the ball down. And what you want to watch for with Davis is his plant foot in that dirt. 41-yard attempt. And it is good. Greg Davis, who struggled last week with two, comes up with a 41-yard field goal as the zeros go up. And the Oakland Raiders with a break on that call that maintained possession for them wind up taking a lead into the locker room in an otherwise undistinguished offensively played first half. A tough break against uh, the Giants with a fumble that came loose, recovered by New York in the final seconds. The replay indicated that it should have been their ball. It remained Oakland's that led to the field goal and the three-point lead. This is David Patton, and he's got some running room. And is bumped at about the 15 and flies forward to the 20. And so the Giants will start from there. Trailing 10 to 7 as we begin the second half. Giants rush for only 43 yards. A problem last week against Washington as well. They passed for 101. And the Raiders is struggling on offense despite 135 yards passing. Unable to sustain any drives, but they have the lead. Look at the penalties. Same thing as last week for the Raiders. We have a flag here on the opening kickoff. That brings us to a total of 15 penalties as we begin the second half. Yeah, and it's eight now for the Raiders. And last week they had 15, which was entirely too many. And they're right hovering around the same number right now. They went into the halftime with seven, and they're right back first play of the game. They're on track again. That's an area John Gruden cannot tolerate. It's hard enough to sell belief in the program getting your new system involved, offensively, defensively, because it is a new system. It's new names, it's new numbers, it's new routes, it's everything is new. 
And that's a tough job in itself. Now you throw in penalties, and that's just shooting yourself in the foot before you ever have a chance. So the second kickoff to start the second half, taken at the five-yard line by David Patton, comes straight up the field and gets a good block. And it's Davis, the kicker, who pushes him out in Oakland territory at the 46-yard line. 49-yard return for David Patton. Watch what he does here. First of all, he gets up into the wedge. Watch the three-man wedge up there. They kick out. Now, when it's running back, you want to get up into it, then find your cut. Then find where you're going to take it. And then you want to attack the kicker. You want to go right at him. <laughs> you don't want to step out of bounds. A 49 yard kick return for David so the Giants trailing by three. Good start here. A 35-yard differential following that second kickoff. Canell just stepped up away from the rush there and never even saw it. And and he's over the head of, of Callaway, but there'll be flags flown. Eric Allen on the coverage. Flags flown. What, me? Flags flown. Did I, did I have my hands all over? 42. <laughs> Holding. Defense, number 21. Five yards. Automatic first down. No, it wasn't you, Ronnie. It was Eric Allen. <laughs> Darrell Russell has returned following his ankle injury in the first half. He's in the defensive front for Oakland. And that is complete to Ike Hilliard. Another flag. Yet another flag down. Illegal use of the hands to the face. Defense, yeah. number 24. Penley is declined. Result of the play, first down. It's Charles Woodson, the Heisman winner. Watch his hands on the jam. Watch him come up with the shoulder pads right in his face. First down, Giants. Another costly penalty puts the Giants inside the 30. Barber. And another flag. And another flag makes it four flags on four plays. We just talked to a guy on the internet Offside, at halftime. Defense, 93. Lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down, first down. Was there a flag on that internet call? Yeah, there might have been, but <laughs> can you imagine? I mean, here we are. We're talking to a guy at halftime on an internet. And, Tim, you know, we're going to bring you up to speed or, on the internet stuff. And, that you know, you just, the guy called in and asked a question. This isn't talk radio, Tim. That's no, right. He logged on. He logged on. Okay? And yeah. he sent a little email to us and then asked a question. Well, we're glad to have it. And, and, and nonetheless, all we've seen so far is yellow flags in this second half. Miguel, and he gets smacked and the ball comes loose. That's James Harris. Let's see who comes up with the ball. Oh. And, and the Darryl Giants Russell. recover. And Darrell Russell wanted to pick the ball up. He and wanted to pick the ball up and, and run with it. He should have just fell on the football, the football right there. You got to fall on the football. When you got a chance to get it right here, Canal is trying to do a, a double fake there. And he holds on to it just a little too long. Harris comes around, gets on the ball. Now Russell's trying to pick it up, but... Well, you're, that's, you're that's, exactly right. You yeah. see Harris comes around on the strip, swatting the ball. Nice play by Harris. Now, right there, Russell tries to figure out two things. First of all, you fall on the ball. Secondly, you can get injured that way in traffic. Another Scott Gregg uh, was the man who recovered it for the Giants to keep possession, and yet another flag. Start. Offense, number 65. This is unbelievable. Five-yard penalty. Ron Still second Stone. down. McGilly Cardi this time. Second down and 18. Screen. Charles Way. Back near the original line of scrimmage. That's one of the only screens I think I've ever seen with no blockers out in front. <laughs> Way was out in front of his blockers. Well, take a look. Danny Cannell drops up. Now he wants to rush to come in. See, here comes Harvey up. And he wants to. Now these guys don't get out. The only person that gets out is Way. And he's looking for some help. Pushed out by Beaker. It'll lead third down. Long 10. Jurovicius comes in. Callaway and Hilliard, three wides. Two of them to the left. Callaway in the slot. Canel steps up and starts to run with it. And did he get to the marker? He, no, he didn't. Oh, you go! You make a great play. You point out the blocker. You got to die for the first down there. You got to make. You got to.
do he the did, John Elway thing. He you got to go up in the air and go after it. He didn't know where he was on the field, Ronnie. He did not know where the first down marker was. Because he ran, he runs behind it. See the, look, he runs behind the pylon there. The, you know the little flag they throw out right there. Look, he's looking at it, and he runs behind it. So they'll attempt a field goal from 37 yards out. Brad Deloiso. Delay game. Flag. The flag back in the end zone. They didn't make the clock on the on the field goal play. Oh man, that that's going to age Jim Fossil. Delay. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. 42-yard attempt officially for Deloiso. Trying to tie it up. He's got the leg. And he's got the target. So it is tied. No, that's first down. See. Yeah, so that's, that's right, Sorry, That's first down. First, first down. down. First down. And the ball moved to the 20-yard line. And what that does for the Giants, the Giants haven't been playing well at all. The Raiders, who give themselves a, a chance not to win this football game by doing stuff like that, but the Giants get back into the game. Fossil gets to settle down here, but it's unbelievable. I haven't seen anything like this at all. Take the three off the board and a first down Giants, and there's the catch by Callahan. Callaway and it's first. The Giants the lead after a bizarre series. This is Howard from the goal line, and Desmond Howard. Good return all the way to the 40-yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Into the receiver's hands. That was a great throw by Danny Canal. On first down, Napoleon Kaufman has a first down inside Giant territory to the 48-yard line. Tito Wooten steered him out. Kaufman carried for the first time to start this game and went 80 yards for the opening score. Since that time, that 80-yard rush, 4-2 and minus 5, 11 is last best gain until that one there for 12 and a, an open first down. And they go to him again and Kaufman picks up maybe seven. And a flag. And yet another penalty flag. You know, you look at those numbers of Kaufman and the only thing that can re really remind you of, they're Barry Sanders numbers, you know? Barry Sanders gets minus 5, 2, 8, 60. Face mask, defense, number 75, five-yard penalty, will be a first down. First down. That time he stacked up Harvey Williams right at the line of scrimmage. Little, if any, gain. Trying to run straight ahead. You know, Marcus Buckley came flying in there. You know, so that's one thing you have to do is blow up the run game. That's how you have to stop the run game. A lot of people try to bring eight men up in the box, have the extra person up there, or there's run blitzes. You have to attack. You have to get in the backfield and blow those things up. John Fox does it. We talked to Willie Shaw, the defense coordinator for the Raiders. He loves to do it as well. Second and ten. George changing it up. Short drop. He's got his man. That is Tim Brown. And Brown, close to the first down, maybe short by about a yard. Will it be Sparks on the coverage? Jeff George now 14 of 26. And wh what I like about this play right here is that he audibilizes and Tim bites the, bites the slant down. He gives himself some room, some room to operate in the middle there, giving himself a big target. You, you, you take the slant and you buy it down and you take less yards and cut it down so you can get a better angle. You can't play it much better than Flippy Sparks did. Double tight end, the ball comes loose and the Raiders maintain possession. George able to dive on that loose ball that came right from the snap. And some tempers fraying there with some words being exchanged. No flag, however. You see Jeff George's hand? His left hand went down. It went down. 
His left hand before he stepped out, it, it opened up. He opened his hand up underneath before the ball came up. Watch real slow. Watch his hand right here open up. Watch it. It opens up. Watch it open. Open and bang. The ball's out and on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen. They'll go for it here on fourth down and three. They are at the Giants' 31-yard line. A little surprising to me. What's that, about 40, 48-yard field goal it would be? Williams and Ritchie, the running backs. They go to Ritchie, the fullback, and he's got the first down Raiders. I've seen that play since 1981, the three-strong principle. Getting the tight end in a hook area, getting the wide receiver in a hook area, and then sneaking out that fullback to the flat. The linebackers, everybody's intent on trying to keep everything in tight. They forget about the fullback that slips out of there. Tom Ryan, Rathman, a la John Ritchie being able to make the play there. First down, Oakland. Inside the 25 of the New York Giants, Kaufman gets a couple. Ran into a wall and was pulled down from behind by Conrad Hamilton coming from the corner. And met in front by the defensive end, Chad Bratsky. And you can see the intensity starting to pick up here. That's what you want to see. You want to see Bratsky getting down inside, being able to slant down and take it on. I mean, that's what you want down here. Your front four, this is where they got to step up, Bill. This is where they got to make plays. Second and eight. Kaufman over 100 yards now. George steps away from the rush. And it's intended for Tim Brown, but out of bounds incomplete. You know, on the pass rush there, you talked about those front four getting after it, and that's where they have to really put the pressure on. These guys are coming. Here's Michael Strahan. He comes on one corner. Watch him getting drugged down to the ground. I mean, they know what kind of presence he can be. And then on the other side, you had Bradsky as well. Bradsky got some push in there, and Harlow drug him to the ground. Carl Gray in the secondary for the Giants, their new acquisition. We have another timeout on the field here with third down still when we return. Sideline, Corey Widmer out with a strained knee, and you can see walking around hoping that he might get back in. Right now, his substitute is number 58, Doug Coleman. His third year out of Nebraska, in it, middle linebacker for the Giants. Third down and nine, Oakland. Following the timeout. George, he's got Tim Brown, touchdown, a flag thrown at the goal line but Tim Brown is in the end zone with an apparent Oakland score let's see what the call is going to be Conrad Hamilton number 41 at the coverage for New York penalty filled second half interference defense number 41 penalty is declined touchdown so it'll stand the double slow go route they call that sluggo where you run the double move, you fake like you're going to run the backside corner, and you give him a double move back inside, double sluggo. Great move by Tim Brown. Davis for the point after. <laughs> 17 to 14, the Raiders in the lead. And Jeff George has done a great job in this stretch right here, being able to recognize the blitz. Now, he'll see the blitz. You see Tim Brown down here at the bottom right right here. And when you see Tim Brown there at the bottom, the thing that I like about this, Jeff George recognizes, and he throws off the back foot. The great move by Tim Brown to freeze Conrad Hamilton is called Sluggo. I used to get whooped, like, I used to get whooped by Dwight Clark on that same pass pattern. Dwight was the first guy who ran that pattern, and now everybody that's got the West Coast offense runs the Sluggo route. Sluggo. That sounds like a pass route they would call from me. <laughs> a Sluggo route. Or a slow go. <laughs> what, what is Sluggo? It's Sluggo? Sluggo. Jeff George showing some emotion after his 
Touchdown pass connected. It was a perfect strike for him. After a difficult first half, Raiders have taken the lead, 17 to 14. Actually, they had all that pressure coming up front on George, and that's the second time that I remember in this game that George has been under pressure, and he's found Tim Brown. It seems that if any two people are understanding what to do at the time of pressure, it's Jeff George and Tim Brown. I agree with you, Bill. Davis's kickoff taken by David Patton. Patton shakes off one tackle. Now into the infield dirt here at the Oakland Coliseum and gets to the 37-yard line. 30-yard return. So the Giants in good field position to start this series. Canal. That down, is incomplete. Yeah, it was hit the ground. fielded neatly by Chris Calloway, but that doesn't count. Yeah, he, he fielded that nicely right behind second base. Right. Shortstop got behind second base and fielded that little <laughs> bouncer right yeah. up in his stomach. That's what he's supposed to do, right? Get, Absolutely. Get your body in front of it. A little short hop. <laughs> I mean, that's tough to get good traction and come off the ball. Great Camella in at fullback, locking for Charles Way, and there's no way for Way to go. And I, and I think it's tough also for, for the running backs. You, you saw Charles Way came up in there gingerly. It's hard to get ahead of steam and get up in there and make a cut when you're a big guy. Got to leave third and ten. Here, here, here's Camella, 45. Now he's a fullback, and then there's Way, 30. Two fullbacks in the backfield, and that's the old counter OU, where the back lines up over there as an offset tight end in the slot and get in motion and comes across with the pulling guard. Albert Lewis in it. Safety for Anthony Newman at the moment. Newman came into the game with a groin injury. And flags again. Did they make the clock? Well, what you got there is you got the crowd. And we talked about Ball that. start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. We talked about that with Jack Tatum. And Jack said to me, he goes, Ronnie, I remember walking in the stadium. And when I walked in here, man, I used to get chills. And right there, you, you got a sense of it. And what it, it happened there, it caused a penalty, penalty, Bill. Can I ask you a question? When everybody talks to you, do they always start out by calling you Ronnie first? <laughs> oh, they love talking they say, to you. Ronnie, yeah. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> and I don't know why. <laughs> 15, third and 15, and the Pass completion to Barber. Barber, good piece of running. Barber fights for the first down. He'll be very close to it. Albert Lewis finally hauled him down. What a good effort by Tiki Barber. They're, they, they're, they still fear you, Ronnie. And that's why they call you Ronnie. They say they want to make sure they're on your side first. They say, Ronnie, and then <laughs> make sure everything's okay, and then they tell you. Yeah, and, 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 when, Mr., and, and when Mr. Tatum came up Mr. To Tatum. He, he didn't say Ronnie. <laughs> You called him Mr. Assassin. And when you look at this play right here, Tiki Barber gave a great effort on that play, but putting themselves in the hole, that's something that Coach Fossil talked well, about. Well, it's another third do down they didn't yeah. complete. You and that's been what's been killing them. Even though they won last week, you, you look at that game and you say, hey, wait a second, there's something wrong here. Maynard's punt, line shot, comes down at the, near the goal line. It's going to be down there at the one-yard line. That ball just absolutely stopped. Pete Monty. Pete Monty buries it there. 54-yard punt. Wasn't the prettiest looking thing you ever saw, but when it landed, watch this ball just absolutely stop. Pops up. And and right here, what you're going to see is that the guy, he, he, I'm not sure if his back foot's on that back line. Pete Monty covering it. And it's going to stand. On the one-yard line. The Oakland Raiders will have to start from the shadow of their goal line if there was a shadow. Closer to the goal line than the one-yard line where that ball popped. And we see Corey Widmer back in the middle linebacker. Sprained knee, but after a little work from the trainer, he got himself back out there. Meanwhile, Darrell Ashmore continues for Lincoln Kennedy at right tackle for the Oakland Raiders. George in the end zone. Line shot downfield. Oh, off the fingertips of Brown had he caught it. He had nothing but end zone in front of him. The West Coast offense always likes to throw the ball 
deep. The West Coast offense, and you'll see right here, Bill. Tim Brown attacking the wide receiver, attacking uh, the Felipe Sparks here, and Jeff Dior is throwing off the back foot, but Tim, that's the one you got to make. That's the one that separates this West Coast offense to Jerry Rice's and making the great plays like that. And look at those, sure look at the fingers like he has back. taped up. He's got those fingers all taped up. You know, he had a sprained thumb from minicamp. Sprained a ligament in his thumb. Jeff George throws the ball so hard, he has to have that thing taped up. So you see this piece of tape, right? It's connecting his forefinger and his thumb. He keeps a little strand of tape on the other hand so that the thumb won't get much separation from the forefinger. That was Harvey Williams who got out just over the three-yard line. That leaves third down along seven. Desmond Howard comes in at wide receiver to make four wides on this play. One setback. And a hard count draws the Giants over. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's, that's a tough break for the Giants. That was Hamilton. What is it about you nose guards? <laughs> Come on, talk to <laughs> me, man. Defense. Tell me. Defense, number 75. Five-yard well, penalty, still third down. You know, you always say, how the heck can you move when the ball is right in front of your face? Well, you got to remember that right up there by your ear is that quarterback yelling that hard count, too. And that, that's what got Hamilton on that one. Mm -hmm. The fifth penalty to the Giants. The Raiders have had four. That's just here in the third quarter. One in every four plays in this game has resulted in a flag. That's Richie. They got that one going. He's got the first down. The rookie from Stanford. Third round pick this year. He actually shared the fullback spot at Stanford with the backup fullback of the New York Giants. And that's Greg Camella. We saw earlier leading the blocking for Charles Way on one play. He had a baptism last week, too, in Kansas City. A rookie coming in at fullback. And he fullbacks involved as much as the offensive line in pass protection. And he had some breakdowns last week. He didn't understand the audibles and put Jeff George and his offense in a bad situation. This is Kaufman, burst of speed, another flag flies. Holding, offense, number 83, penalized half the distance to the goal line. Repeat the down, first down. Ronnie, you were all over that one. Dudley, the culprit. And right here on top, you'll see Dudley trying to hold on to his block. He's trying to make that block, and he's got Jersey right there. Now, let it, if he had let it go just a little early, they wouldn't have seen that, and, and, and he would have been able to maybe escape without getting a call. Instead, it's first and 15. Short pass to the fullback. Richie again breaks a tackle, and Richie gets back and picks up the first down. What an effort. And a holding call against the Raiders. Holding. Offense, number 77. Penalized half the distance to the goal line. Repeat the down. First down. Pat Harlow this time. Watch 90, 98, Jesse Armstead, New York Giants linebacker. I think that ankle, see that ankle? He's got it so taped up, he's ginger on it, running gingerly. He misses a tackle there. That's not the Jesse Armstead that led the team in tackles last year for the Giants. That's not the Jesse Armstead that was voted to the Pro Bowl. George gives it to Kaufman. Kaufman make it uh, Williams. Harvey Williams straight ahead. No, it is Kaufman. Foley and Kaufman, number 26. You know, you know and you, you sit here and you look at John Ritchie coming off the field, and how do you reward a guy that is giving that much effort when you when you get a holding call, Bill? I, I tell you that. That's got to be tough. This guy's giving. Look at him. He's dirty. I mean, this is a Matt Millen kind of guy right here. He's dirty. He loves playing the game of football. He's only got one outfit. He wears it all the time. He brushes his hair once a week, and he's not getting rewarded for that effort. Second and 15. Raiders trying to climb out of their own end zone. They go to Richie again, and, and the ball comes loose this time. That looks like it's out. And the Giants say they have it. Giants ball. 
And so do the offense. Come in from on first down, on second to second and six or more. Downs where normally defenses don't blitz. He says you have to do that because when you sit back, he says they're just going to dink and dunk you around the field, and you don't want to give them five or six yards underneath. He says be aggressive. Three wide receivers from the shotgun for Cannell, and it's dropped by Charles yeah. Way. Another flag. The Giants Holy offense. Offense, number 78. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Third down. The Giants have a total of 199 yards of total offense, and there's 180-some yards in total penalty yards. That That's disgusting. And, and I think a lot of that, Bill, is attributed to the fact that they're out here on the West Coast for the first time. It's a young football team. They haven't been able to keep their composure. They had a chance to score three points there. Now they put themselves in another negative position. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to recover on this play. Third down, back at the 30-yard line now. 24 yards needed for a first down. Canal to Hilliard. Not too much, three or four. I'm not sure uh, if that was the best choice for his pass target in that situation. No, yeah, yeah, third, the third and 24, and you're just going to throw a little two yard out in the flat there because that's all you have. And Jim Fossil is going to stick to his guns. He is not going to put the game in Danny Cannell's hands. He is not going to let Danny Cannell go downfield and take chances this early in his career. 43-yard field goal attempt for Del Uiso. And it's good. Brad Del Uiso. And we've still got a whole quarter to go. Del Uiso's kickoff taken in the end zone by Desmond Howard. He will Desmond not bring Howard. it out. So we've had four scores despite all of the penalty flags. It's Raider ball starting at their 20-yard line. Goffin gets a couple. Raiders 13 penalties, two short of their number last week with still a quarter to go. And it's cost them 93 yards. For the Giants, they're 13. That's cost them 80 yards. Second and eight. Cedric Jones and Christian Peter in the defensive front now for the Giants. Peter 99, Jones 94. Good time. And this time, George throws another ground ball. Tim Brown dealing that one as well as Callaway did for the Giants, but it doesn't count. You talk about those penalties, Tim, and you talk last week the Raiders had 15. This week they're up to 13 already. And I think that penalties on a team are a gauge, like a, mo a monitor of discipline, of team discipline. If you look around the leagues and the teams that have the fewest penalties at the end of the year are the teams that you can look at and know have discipline. Pittsburgh, Tampa Bay, Kansas City. And you look at them and you think of what kind of team they are and they're disciplined teams. When you see the Raiders numbers dropping penalties, you'll know they've caught on to John's system. George steps up and fires. What a rope that was and it's complete. And that is James Jett with a good catch. Wooten hanging all over him. But another flag. And it's at the line of scrimmage. See which way this goes. Holy defense. Penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Defensive holding, and so this the... This is the conclusion of the third quarter. 12-yard gain will stand for the first down, and we've reached the end of the third quarter with the score. The New York Giants 17, the Oakland Raiders 17, dressed up. Well, anything can be a Raider, you know? A Raider, it's hard to dress up as a Bear or a Pack, but anything could be a Raider. George just gets it away. Didn't see the... Action on the backside, but he threw it out of bounds. Well, the old days we talked about at the beginning of our game, this was a tough place to come in. Nobody wanted to come in and play the Raiders during that 20-year span between 65 and 85. The stadium was filled every time, and they were rabid fans, to say the least. But since their return, this is the beginning of their fourth season after coming back from L.A., the Raiders are 10 and 14 at home. In fact, they've only won six of their last 20 home games, and that, of course, is attributed to their decline in attendance. Those that are here, cheer them on. That's Kaufman. Kaufman gets about five. There's an idea of the numbers. I mean, you just didn't want to come in here. Look at that. An 822 percentage, 1967 to 81. But things have fallen off. 
All the way down to a 41% win-loss. Al Davis would like to see those first set of numbers up here again. And of course, that's the effort with the hiring of John Gruden and the hope that he can uh, get the program turned around to the commitment to excellence, the Raiders' slogan of their winning days. Third down, a long five. George running out of time, and it's Strahan pulling him down. You just know that was a matter of, matter of time that one of the defensive linemen were going to step up and... We look at this guy, we had a chance to talk with him. He made a sack early on in this game and he does the same thing. He takes him and he walks him back to the quarterback and takes it down. You get those hands on you and you bow that back as that's what Michael Strahan does. And then you can come off of that once you've jolted him. But the thing about Strahan is he is playing like a pro bowler. He believes now, he says, hey, I'm a pro bowler. And now he plays like that, play after play, week in and week out. All right, goes punt. Taken by Toomer. Toomer trying to get wide, and if he does, he's got some room. Here he goes. And it's the punter who steps into him close to the 35-yard line. Tim, I talked about the penalties as a monitor for discipline. I think special teams play is also a monitor for discipline. And there's been no coverage from either team today. Barber for the Giants, and nice piece of running by Tiki Barber. Down close to the 20-yard line, a giant first down. Set up by that punt return from Amani Toomer. And, and what, what I like about that play, Bill, is, is that he got outside again. You talked about that earlier. Watch right here. Here's Grady, Grady Jackson. He's in there, and he gets reached right here, and that creates a seam. Now, see this? That's where the cutback lane is. Because Grady Jackson doesn't get across the face. Barber this time trying to go straight ahead, and they There's stop Grady him Jackson. right at the line. Grady Jackson. And he's in there. He's in there for Darrell Russell. Now, out come, now comes Chuck Osborne and Grady Jackson, and now in goes Russell and Merlin. Yeah, when you get when you get backed up down there, you let them drive down the field. You got to get your starters back in there. Awesome, nearly a yard on that last play, second and eleven. Hilliard goes in motion. Canal. Shoots it out to the back, and that's incomplete. Too low for Tiki Barber. Barber taking a look for some real estate there. Didn't make the catch. For quarterbacks all around the league. Last week there was eight injured. Now Aikman and Elway. Third down for Canal. Canal incomplete. Intended for Callaway. And it was Marquez Walker who had the tight coverage on him. Brings up fourth down. The one thing about Danny Cannell is, and Jim Fossil talked to us about it, Ronnie, is he's going to put the ball only where his receiver has a chance to catch it. Now, if his receiver can't catch it because of the coverage, the chances are that the defender isn't going to intercept it. Yeah, and, and what he said was he wants his quarterback to throw it away from the defensive back. How many quarterback coaches teach their quarterbacks to throw it away from there? Deloiso's field goal is no good. From 42 yards out, we remain tied. We'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum, 12.28 to go regulation time. From 42 yards out, he's on the infield dirt here, the home of the Oakland A's. And you can see right there, right there, the ball's lean like a, the leaning tower of pizza. In, in, into the punter, into Maynard. And in there. You always want that ball to be a wreck. It, it looks like, yeah, there's another angle of it. So it's wide right, and we remain tied at 17. Raiders take over the ball at the former line of scrimmage right there at the 30-yard line. And a flag comes down again. Ball start. Offense, 82. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. James Jett gets the call and makes it first and 15. George hit from behind. The ball picked up by the Raiders. Harlow grabbed the loose ball, but it was Bradsky who put the hit from behind. George never saw him. You know, Bradsky, we talked about him earlier as an overachiever. He just keeps working. I want you to take a look at him right over here. Here's Bradsky. Downfield, he's pursuing the ball. He's around making things happen. Second and 23. Hoffman nowhere to See, go. And who, guess who's there again? It was Bradsky. Yeah. And he had help from Hamilton. 
And what I'm getting the sense of is this line, these front four guys that we talked about are now taking and dominating the line of scrimmage. And this is where you got to step up. This is where you got to play good football, defensive football with your front four, Bill. There was a great article written in the New York Post this week by Steve Serby about Bradsky. I mean, it just really sums up what you have in this guy all the way back to when he was at Eastern Michigan, Kentucky. All the way back to when he was six years old. He wanted to play in the NFL. That's complete. Dudley, the tight end. Now they were waiting for a big play to him, and he gets it the first down. Ricky Dudley has all the abilities to be the next Keller Winslow, and he's right up here on top. He's able to get up the seam pattern, and Jeff George keeps going to the well. Well, this time, he was able to deliver. Yeah, there wasn't much of an opening there, but that's, that, that's belief in your tight end. When you throw the ball and there's coverage around him that close, as Marcus Buckley was, you're believing in your tight end. Kaufman trying the middle, really clogged up that time. Got maybe a yard. Christian Peter made the tackle. George is now 20 of 36. And earlier in this game, he was 3 for 11 for just 53 yards. But he's now well up over 200 and uh, has gotten stronger as the game has gone on. But we're still tied, 17 to 17. Bolian Kaufman, 15 carries, has him up at 119, including his 80-yard run for a touchdown on the opening play of the game. Second down. Long seven. And that's just overthrown to James Jett. Uh, Bradsky and Harlow are just having a battle. They've been, those two guys have been going at it all day long. And he comes in on this fast play, and he just shakes, shakes free. Here's Harlow, and here's Bradsky rushing outside. Watch, he just gets around them, and then Harlow drags him down. Craft, crafty veteran move by Harlow. Slide down the leg and bring him down as well. Then on the other side, it's Michael Strahan. He's battling Darrell Ashmore, getting that push. Those two guys can bring it. Third down. George changing it and can't get it done in time. Takes a timeout. That's their final time out here with 9.44 to go. He's going out there, he says, I'll tell you what. I'm over there, I'm 35 years old. I'm across the, the stadium from Marty Schottenheimer. And I think what's happening to him right now, he's got that recall of being in this situation. How do I manage the clock? How do I get this West Coast offense to continue to run plays? And right there, we Don't got another stop. outside. Don't stop. Oh. And they didn't stop. Giant jump, the ball comes loose. Tim Brown, was he down? They call it incomplete, didn't have possession. And a flag back at the line of scrimmage. No question a giant jump was he drawn. Well, see, what happens is when, when Keith Hamilton jumped off sides there. All sides. Defense, number 75. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Third down. When he jumps off side, watch, Tim. I want to teach you a little something here about defensive line play. I know you're really interested in this stuff. <laughs> when he jumps off sides here, when Hamilton jumps and gets into the right there. Now he stops. He stands up and he stops. But the play can still go on. You've got to finish and go wrap the quarterback up. Because otherwise, he can take a shot downfield, and you don't know what your defensive backs are doing back there. Good point. Third and two with the penalty. Tim Brown, motion behind the ball. Flags and whistles. Hey, Bill, why can't we put some uh, cotton in his ears? Maybe th that'll get I'll him. Start. Offense, 77, five-yard penalty. Well, they just gave it right back to him. This. So back to uh, third and eight. Third sideline, and oh, right on the target. What a grab. And what a pass. Tim Brown connecting. And that's the throw that gets everybody excited. That throw right there is what Jeff George is all about. And you see him, he's able to lead Tim Brown, but the line dry. It doesn't give Carlton Gray a chance to react on that play. Tim Brown has gone up against Carlton Gray. Carlton Gray used to be at the Seattle Seahawks, so he knows how to work this guy, but Jeff George makes an excellent throw there, Tim. Oh, what a throw. Fantastic throw. And a first down. 
at the 27-yard line. Raiders driving in Giants territory. Kaufman gets a couple close to the 25-yard line. Well, they just picked him up from the Colts. Carlton Gray, you're talking about? That's correct. Yeah. And Indy cut him in a dispute. You know, he was upset because they started Tyrone Poole, but they picked up in free agency. And Carlton was upset and voiced his opinion publicly. So he got the ax there. And actually, you know, the Giants really made a quick move in going in and scarfing him up. Ernie, of course, he, you know, really pulled a fast trigger in negotiating that contract and helping the Giants out since they lost Seahorn. Down and eight. One pump from George, and he clicks that with a tremendous wrist strength he has. It's caught by the tight end, Dudley, short of the first down, but it won't leave much. It'll be third and about a yard, and they've taken four minutes off the clock on this drive, have the Raiders. It's down to 8-14 remaining. Tied at 17, and they're in scoring position. And when you look at the Raiders, Ronnie, you, you see flashes. I saw it last week in the Kansas City game. You see back, there's that pass down to Tim Brown, a touchdown here, a big run here. You see flashes, but you get the sense that it's just bits and pieces. You can see that there's no continuity and no flow to the offense yet. They still have a long way to go. Well, it's been their defense. It's been the story of their success last year and last week, and they are third and inches now. The Raiders and let's see what the Giants can do. It's a flag is thrown to nobody's surprise. Small start. Yes, offense indeed. number 76. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Third down over again. George, the man on him. He pulled down. The ball is loose and the Raiders just recover it in time. I believe it's Harlow, who got back to smother it. Now make it, make it Ashmore came up with a loose ball. And that's the fifth sack by the Giants. Well, I want you to take a look here. First of all, you keep two backs in, okay? Now, when you keep two backs in, you've got to find the linebacker. There's the linebacker. They went out to help out on Strahan, and nobody stays in to pick up the blitzing linebacker, Armstead. And you got to find him. Harvey William has he has a check inside and then work go out, out to yeah, the, work exactly to the right. outside and then, and then chip Michael Strahan. So the Giants defense comes up big again, forcing the punt. It's out of bounds inside the five-yard line or close to the five. And, Bill, you know, they didn't get a turnover there, but that is a turnover. I mean, they're down there. They have a chance to kick a field goal. First down, Giants. At the six-yard line of New York, Tiki Barber scratches for a couple out the right side. The crowd exhorting the Oakland defense to do what the Giants just did to them. Danny Cannell, 18 of 23 on the day. And I guess the question is, uh, with their running attack averaging about three yards a carry in this game, are they going to be looking for Danny Cannell to pick up the passage through the airways to try and win this in the final minutes. Going to the air here on second down. Fires it into Hilliard. Hilliard slashing across the middle. A flag is down. They anticipate Holy and hope for every week. Offense number 74. Penalize half the distance. Repeat the down. Second down. Minus the penalties. Now they don't want the penalties, but yet what they want with Canell is they want a close ball game. They want strong defense, and they just want to try to do whatever is given to you offensively. He has not hurt them. He hasn't had a pick. He's 18 of 23 throwing the ball for 160 yards, and he has two touchdown passes. Out of the end zone to the sideline. That's right on target to Callaway. Callaway gets to the 10-yard line, and it'll leave third down and about six. And that sixth that six sense that... Danny Cannell brings to the table is what he's applying right now. Everybody talks about arm strength. They talk about all the other attributes that quarterbacks have to have, but the, the one that I like the most, decision-making. And that's what this kid has done. He's making good decisions with the football. He's got three wide receivers. Jura Vicious, the number two pick from Penn State, is in the lineup. Cannell comes out intended for Callaway, a little behind him. One of the few times, a little off target. On the coverage was Marcus Walker, number 38. 
you know, last week they were two for 12 on third downs. As of right now, the Giants are one for 12. And third down area and rushing yards per carry is a big concern for the Giants offensively. Maynard standing in the end zone for this punt. 5.45 on the clock. Raiders are going to have good field position here with this 17-17 tie. And they have the ever-dangerous Desmond Howard. He'll take it right at midfield. He singles fair catch at the Giant 49. 40-yard punt. Well, it's been 25 years, we mentioned earlier, since the Giants played here at the Oakland Coliseum. The first time they met was the last time they faced each other here. Everybody looked a little different in those days, didn't they? Raiders were led by John Madden and the snake, Kenny Stabler. Two touchdown passes for him, and the defense pitched a shutout. Marv Hubbard, remember this fullback, ran for two second-half touchdowns, and the Raiders won that ball game 42 to nothing. That Freddie B right there, Fred Freddie Malinikov. Receivers coach that's here, that's one of the great receivers ever to play this game. On first down, about a five yard pickup for Kaufman on the short pass from George. You know, I think, I think with the time remaining, you're run 520 and it's running down. It's real important right now for Jeff George to get in the huddle and consume and take over that huddle. All right guys, listen up, okay? No penalties, do your job, here's what we're running. And you get down the field and you chew up another minute and a half or two minutes and you get the ball in the end zone. And now that's putting the game in Danny Cannell's hands and forcing him to drive the length of the field. That's the best scenario for the Raiders. Second and a long five, Kaufman. Kaufman rips it through for a first down. To the 35 of New York. And all day, all day you got this kid going to the outside. You got him going to the outside. Now he's patient. As you can see here, he's patient. And one of the things when you have that nitro speed and you're trying to get outside and you cut it back, everybody's going to zoom and they're going to zoom to the outside. That time he was able to turn it back up. And that's what you got to do now. Control the football, being smart with it, but putting it in Kaufman's hands. Two tight ends in on this formation. And they go quickly to Tim Brown on the weak side, and he has a first down. Nice looking play by the Raiders. So far, so good. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we, there are a few doubting Thomases, I'm sure, and there are three of them here. Have you been in this situation before with the Raiders? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, but, well, the, from what I've seen so far this year in the second half, they're fighting. They're a team that's fighting. And now I'm seeing them put together three plays in a row with some Christmas and some direction. 3.49 on the clock. First down inside the 25. And the Giants just clog everything up that time. Little, if any, gain for Harvey Williams. But in answer to your question, Ronnie, yeah, years prior to this, yeah, this is where they would fall apart. When, when it came crunch time for them and they had to make something happen, that's when they'd fall apart. And what I like now is that we talked about the fast-paced offense. Look at them. They're milking the clock now. They're being patient. So everybody's talked about the philosophy of getting up to the clock. Here they're taking their time. They're working the clock. Nickens in the slot. Tim Brown wide left. Play action. George, and he was trying to get the fullback downfield. He was trying to get Buckley turned around. Marcus Buckley, the linebacker. Try that little wheel route outside where you go to the flat and then you turn up the sidelines and get behind the linebacker. Couldn't quite pull it off. That'll leave third down and nine. Williams comes back in. Coffin comes out. Giants change up defensively. Widmer comes off the field. Extra defensive backs in their nickel here on third and nine. Quick toss. George up the middle. Nice catch. A diving grab by Desmond Howard. His first catch of the day. And he has a first down. Gutsy call. Well, nobody can zip it like he can. Maybe Favre. That kind of that quick thing. It's just in the wrist. Ping. It goes on a line. It's a beautiful thing to see when he's on. Yeah, what you like about this, he, he looked off the defense there. 
Looked came at Jim back, came, yeah, right. came back inside with the quick toss, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what you like. You like to see a quarterback that can move defensive players, Bill. Well, I gave him the first down. They are going to measure. James Jett was over on the sidelines. James Jett was over on the sidelines stretching out a hamstring. The trainers were working on him, and that's what got Desmond Howard into the game. The first shake, down shake at the 13-yard line. There's a, a look at James Jett. Well, Howard uh, made a good catch for somebody who's only been on the uh, punt and kickoff teams here today until that play. First down, Giants 13, 2.32 oh, oh, oh. to go. Brown in motion. Kaufman eludes the first man into the backfield. That's Bratsky who slaps the ground because he thought he had a shot at him. Timeout. The Giants took a timeout. 2.22 on the clock, and New York takes timeout. The ball is now at the 13-yard line. And that's basically just stopping the clock and forcing them to run one more play before the two-minute warning. See, if they got back in the huddle, they'd just waste 17 seconds or, or, or 20 seconds or whatever's left on the clock. They'd run it down by being in the huddle. That's 17 seconds that the Giants just saved by calling a timeout and forcing them to run a play. And this is where John Gruden has to be smart with the football. He's got to make sure that it, he completes a pass if they're going to complete a pass or they got to run the football. You can't have an incomplete pass at this situation. Dickens out to the right. Keep Brown in the slot. He'll keep it on the ground for Kaufman. Kaufman finds a little opening down to about the nine. They need to get to the three-yard line for a first down. Yeah, they're going to do another one. Smart decision. And they lost five seconds there, Bill. They, they, they hesitated, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they hesitated. Look at Jim Fossil. He's upset because he didn't get the timeout. Watch the fullback, John Ritchie, number 40. He just lowers his head and seeks out Jesse Armstead. Like I said, you saw the way Jesse Armstead, he's, he's not playing football with his hands, he's not using, he had to put his whole body into that thing and just about coil up just to maintain the hole. And there's Fossil, he's hot. Fossil says, you, you don't know what's going on out there? I wanted a timeout as soon as the play's over, timeout. And you were right, Ronnie, they wasted about five seconds waiting to call that timeout. That five seconds is going to turn out to be vital. Especially with the Danny Cannell offense. You need time because he's not going to give you the big play. You need the time so you can move down the field methodically. They need five for a first down. To get to the three-yard line, it's third down. 2.09. Play action fake. Fade pattern, and it's uh, well deep. Out of bounds, incomplete. The tight end, Dudley. The apparent intended receiver, but it's going to be field goal time now for the Oakland Raiders. What I don't understand, they would have had to use a timeout. They would have had to burn a timeout, and now they get the two-minute warning, and and they're going to get a timeout. Don't throw the ball away. Run it up in the middle of the field. Run it up in the middle. Of the field. Some kind of a miscue on that pass pattern too, though, to Dudley. You can see George. Kind of opening his hands saying, what happened, man? 26-yard field goal attempt for Davis. And Davis has it. And the Raiders take the lead with 159 to play, 20 to 17. Greg Davis, who missed a pair last week at Kansas City, has his team in front, 159 remaining. One of the aerial pictures of the remainder of this game that's turned into a thriller here despite all of the miscues we've got a three-point game that is David Patton and he has stopped right at the 20-yard line and now the Oakland defense will have this crowd behind them here to support that three-point lead the 23-yard field goal by Greg Davis is two for two today after missing both of two attempts last week and what Danny, Danny Cannell has to do at this time right now is take what the defense gives you. Work the underneath pattern. You got a great field goal kicker in Deloiso. He's got a strong leg. Work 
the clock. You got a timeout. It's plenty of time. Be patient. They've got to get the ball to about Oakland's 35. Four wide receivers are in. Canal holds his ground and finds Hilliard. Hilliard gets about nine. Canal is now 19 of 24. Giants with one timeout remaining. Second in a yard here at their own 29-yard line, 139. Crowd alive. Canal stands well in the pocket again. Gets it out to Barber, the release man, and gets the first down. And first stops down the clock. And out of bounds, yeah. 30. When he stepped out, 130 remains. This is where you grow up real quick, you know. <laughs> you grow up in this situation right here. And Danny Canal, that was a great throw right there. He was patient. He waited. He waited. He waited. Tiki Barber, let me get it to him. Well, it's also where you gather that team leadership. They're just short of the first down. They measured it right on the sideline for accuracy. Well, the uh, player stepped out, Barber. When you're in that position at quarterback right now, Ronnie, and you maintain your poise and things work out for you and you drive your team downfield and remain poised, that's when those things start going back. Now on Monday, your team third starts saying to itself quietly around to the guy next to you, your buddy in your next locker, hey, how about Cannell? Huh? And that's when you become a leader of your team. So much at stake in that department for both of these teams. The poise necessary here. Raiders try to protect the three-point lead. 1.30 to play. Inches to go for a first. Well pass. Now get some time. Went to the short man and not a good pass. Intended for Barber. He tried to keep it down. That's what his coach wants him to do against tight coverage. Eric Turner was all over him. I mean, I don't care where he threw the ball. Eric Turner had him blanketed. And, and you talk about that little, that rat that, that you can smell. The rat in the woodpile? Yeah, the rat in the woodpile. Well, Eric Turner found it. He smelled one out there, didn't he? Yeah, he found it. And now they got fourth and down. That was, a, that was a good play right there. They threw on the third and inches. Now they got to run and get the first down. Canal, good push for him. He's got the first down to the 31. Time ticks, 120 and under. Now it stopped at 119 while they get the ball set. Watch Lance Scott in the middle of all this. Lance Scott has bodies all over the place. Look what he does. He hooks two people. He hooks two arms and just drives. They just down the ball there. Danny, they, they, they lined up. They, the referee stopped the clock to get everybody back and lined up. Then Danny Cannell had to down the ball. And the referee in that situation, that's his call. Stadium clock has 115. Second and 10. And Hilliard holds on despite a tough hit from Marquez Walker. They're going to try to save that last time out for the field goal. 104 and counting down to a minute now. Now they're going to need a big play. At the Giants 40. And now out to Barber again. Barber steps out at the Giants 45 yard line. 50 seconds left. What a test for the youngster out of Florida State. Becoming the season starter this year. 6'3", 220 pounder, just 24 years old, but they like his poise, and he himself says, this is my team. I have all the confidence required. The quarterback, the New York Giants, right from the get-go in 1998. And three receivers to the left, one to the right. Canal on a line, oh. and it is incomplete. Intended for Jurevicius. I think Jurevicius got robbed. Charles Woodson had the coverage. The Heisman yeah. Trophy winner. And we haven't talked about him all day. But right there, Ohio State, Michigan, atmosphere, what happens? The guy comes up with the play. 
I thought there was contact early on this. I thought he ran right through his shoulder. Juravicius was looking for a flag. Third down. This is it here for the Giants. 46 seconds left. Pressure on Canell, and he is set. I was wondering when they were going to come with a blitz. Eric Turner. And Willie Shaw, you blitz when you don't think they're going to blitz. You come when you don't think they're going to come. That time, they didn't think they were going to come. He came with the blitz. Big play by Eric Turner. They hadn't blitzed that entire series. 32 seconds, fourth down. And now up the middle of the Pick. field. Picked up by Turner. Out of bounds. And 23 seconds left. The Raiders have the ball and the lead. And I think that's what happened when you put the ball in Danny Cannell's hand and force him to win the game. When they had time on the clock, like you were talking about earlier, Ronnie, about them saving that extra five seconds, when you have time, Danny Cannell can move down the field by taking the stuff underneath. But when he's forced to go long, bad things happen. And bad things happen because Eric Turner, on this play, is just being patient, reading Danny Cannell's eyes. He went into the middle again, and it... And Eric Turner, being a crafty veteran, comes up with the big play, and that's why they brought this kid that's in here to make why. plays like that. Well, nice old, catch, too. I love this play here, especially when you're on the winning team. The old, <laughs> the old kneel down? Yeah. Now, it's the worst play when you're on the losing team and you're out there on defense. Nobody enjoyed that opportunity more than Jeff George. Jeff George beaten up last week, a game that saw a whole bunch of uh, plays similar this week to last week in terms of yellow flags, 16 penalties, and yet the same kind of spirit and fight that Oakland showed last week in their loss to Kansas City. They got it out here and win 20 to 17.